Hi, this is Kathy from Craft with Kathy. Thanks for joining me. I have a little project to do today using our tiered tray. And our tiered tray comes all white, but um, I actually use some of my nominee paste, which is available now, part of the big Black Friday sale. Um, everything on the website's 10% off, but Nominee is, away, is available till Sunday, from Friday to Sunday, as long as supplies list. And this last, and this is just an absolutely beautiful color. It's a little bit different from our Shimmer Gold. If you don't have Nominee, you can obviously use Shimmer Gold, but I prefer the Nominee. It's just such a beautiful metallic. So anyway, I painted the sides with a brush and then just the top of this tiered tray. And I'm going to add a design to it. Here's a little instructions for the tiered tray. It comes with the bar and everything. And would you believe this is on sale on the website right now? Take a look under specials so you can check it out. And I've already waxed. I put a little wax and then on and then buffed it off. So I'm done waxing my surfaces. And I'm going to just go ahead and add these designs to these trays and then show you what I'm going to do with it. Obviously, our trays can be used as a traditional cheered tray. I've got something else in mind for it. This transfer is actually called Tear Tray Christmas Pattern. And I'm going to line it up over here on the little, the little hole where the bar goes through, just so that I've got it lined up nice and neatly. Here's a bit more info on the tiered tray and a link where you can check it out and then press it down. Our transfer, oops, did I forget something? Sure did, I forgot to buzz my transfer. Okay, I know it's been a while. Um, let me grab my fuzzy towel. Our transfers are made out of vinyl, which is the teal and silk screen. And we apply the paste to the silk screen and it goes through the transfer to the surface beneath it. The back of the transfers are adhesive back and our transfers are reusable 8 to 12 times or more. So let me recenter this and apply it again. The reason we fuzz is to diminish the stickiness. This is a brand new transfer so it's very sticky. Every time we use it and wash it the adhesiveness will diminish a little bit. So that's why you need to fuzz it a little bit more when something's brand new. So I'm just pressing this down so that I get a nice contact between my surface and my transfer. Okay, get that into the corners a little bit. And I'm going to use some pesto paste and cherry for this layer of the, the tear tray. And my pesto is brand new. I haven't opened it yet. Let me get this open. My nails are a total mess. And I've cracked my thumbnail, so it's a little difficult pulling this up. There we go. Normally I have a little trash container underneath the table by me and I forgot to bring it over. <clears throat> I clean up my fingers a little bit. I've already got some paste on it. Okay. And I want to make sure that's sticking down nicely. And I'm going to use my squeegee to apply my paste. And I think I'm going to have to use my detail tool a little bit, too. This is a snowflake. Maybe I want to do um, the snowflake in... I'm thinking it's a snowflake, right? Looks like a snowflake. Maybe I'm going to do that in my blue. Let me grab... I just put it away, so let me grab what I need here. This beautiful, beautiful glacier paste. It's perfect for snowy scenes and snowmen and snowflake. Isn't that absolutely beautiful light blue? Oh, gorgeous, isn't it? 
or you could possibly use Duchess, I would say. Okay, so let me do the snowflake first. And I just want to grab a little paste, apply it to my transfer, and then basically use the squeegee to go over it and push the paste through the silk screen. Once I've got all the white area covered, then I'm fine. Um, I think I'm going to use, I think I need to use my detail tool for part of this when I get into the area where there's some berries. So I'm grabbing a little bit of pesto right now and just going over these pine needles that are right on the edge. A little bit of paste does go a long way. Now I'm working on a wood surface, so this is pretty much a one-time use type of situation. Um, some of our surfaces, you can wash the paste off and reuse it. Reuse the surface if you want. Wood generally not because um, the paste will absorb into the wood to a certain amount um, and stain the wood if you want. If you do have, um, if you've used chalk paste on something wood and you want to reuse it, wash off as much of the paste as you could remove and then you could sand it or paint it and then use the surface again. But it's not as easy on, as on chalkboard or glass or metal where you could just spritz it with some water and wipe it off. I've grabbed a little bit too much paste there. Oh, I thought I had more on my... This is my um, little detail tool with a tiny little squeegee at the end and a pointy thing at one end that I use sometimes to lift my transfers if, I, if I've got them stuck down and I can't really reach where I need to reach. But this is a good tool to get into tight little areas like this. If you're new to chalking, comment new below. Feel free to ask any questions. I'm not live with this, I'm recording it, but I will check and um, respond to any comments or anything. And don't be intimidated, we're all friends here. The object is to learn and to enjoy ourselves. So never be afraid to ask any questions. Okay, I'm getting into a little bit of tight area there. We have a little bit more paste here. We have a lot of transfers that are one and done that you could use one color on and just be done with it in a snap. I could have used one color on this if I wanted to, but I want to be a little bit, I want it to be a little bit different, a little bit brighter. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna use this as a traditional cheered tray. That's not what I have it in mind for. I'm gonna actually use it as part of a gift. Isn't that a good idea? And these tiered trays are on sale right now, which make it an absolute ideal type of surface for containing a gift. How do you like that? So basically what I'm gonna put on this tray is a bunch of different kinds of candy, perfectly suited for Christmas. Obviously, some peppermints will be on here. And lots of chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Um, but I'm definitely going to have some red and white on it. And I'm just going to load up the trays with candy and wrap the whole tray in some cellophane. And that's going to be one of my gifts that I'm making. So, my recipient can enjoy the candy and when the candy's gone, they have this lovely tiered tray that they could use to put candles on or they could use it as kind of like a serving dish or whatever for candy if they want to. And it's something that they'll have that'll last year after year after year. Now, if you want, you can spray this once you're done with some type of sealer. But as it's wood, I would never soak it in water to clean it. Just wipe it down. A lot of times with chalk, I just suggest dry dusting a surface. OK, 
Okay, so I'm done with my um, pesto, and now I've got my cherry paste out here. Let me grab the cherry and do those little berries with my cherry paste. If you don't have cherry paste, you could use um, our candy apple red is, is perfect too for the red. So I'm gonna take my detail tool again and just catch all these little berries. And I'm lifting up a little bit here. Let me see how that looks. It looks fine. Let me lay it back down to get the berries though. I want to be careful not to pick up any green on my detail tool because I want my berries to be red. So I'm just going to have to be a little bit careful getting into the tighter areas here. But all in all, pretty easy. And then when I have this half of the transfer done, I will lay it down on the other half of the, the circle or the, the first tier and do the other half. I'm gonna try and do it quick enough that I don't have to wash it. Um, we'll see, I'm not quite done yet, so we'll have to see how that goes. And if I have to wash it, no big deal. It doesn't take very long to dry actually, so maybe I will wash it and not do the other side because I run the risk if I lay this down because of the uh, length of the transfer. I could actually trim this if I wanted to. Um, I don't want to smear my paste. That or I could use my little dryer and dry it. We'll see. Our dryer now has a little bit longer of a cord. So um, I think it was originally four feet or whatever. And I would always have a hard time plugging it in. But this has a six foot cord, so it's fine. It'll reach from the outlet to where I'm at without any issues. Almost done now, isn't this nice and quick? Seriously, how easy is this? Okay, peel and reveal time. Now I'm gonna lift up slowly to make sure that I've caught everything. This is a little bit distressed. Oops, I see here on my leaf, my little leaf, I missed a little of the green. Get my detail tool clean. Grab a little bit more of my green. And just go over this. Where I missed, I think that's where I missed, right? Oops, right up here. Just didn't have enough paste. Okay. And it looks like it's drying already on me. Okay, I'm gonna lift slowly. So if I'm missing anything, I can clean it up. Oop, and look at this, looks like it's drying here for me. Let me grab a little paste and go back over that quickly. Yes, I guess I'm gonna have to clean this before I use it again. I'm dilly-dallying a little bit here and that's probably the problem. Oops. Okay, I need a little bit of cleanup there, but I'm not gonna really worry about it much. Let me grab one of these little Swiss whispers. I'm going to put a little water on it and then come up here and clean where I've got a little bit of smudging. Now I've waxed the surface before I use the paste so basically I've got a little bit of barrier between the wood and um, the paste so that allows me to wipe it off a little bit. Okay. So let's see, I'm going to set this aside, clean my surface first, and then probably do the part of the bottom tray and then come back to this as I sit there and let it dry. Okay, I was looking for my spray bottle, what could I do? Now ideally the easiest way to clean your transfers is to run them over to a sink and use one of our board erasers. And yes, this is called a board eraser because it was initially developed for cleaning our chalkboards. But it also does a wonderful job cleaning our transfers. And I usually cut my board eraser in multiple pieces.
and just wash off my trans. Now you could actually do this in the sink, quick and easy to do. You'll notice sometimes our paste, especially the more highly pigmented paste, will might stain the transfer, but if it does, it doesn't hurt it at all. It just isn't as pretty and pristine as it was when we first started with it. But functionally, it's fine. Like I said, our transfers are reusable eight to 12 times or more. So I'm getting the rest of the residual of the paste off of the front of the transfer with a little disinfecting wipe. Now I'm gonna flip it over and clean the back side, the adhesive side. And after I get all the paste off the back side, then I will remove the fuzz that I deliberately applied. Just usually use a circular motion here. And once I get all the paste off, then I go back over the transfer in one direction, removing the lint. And this allows the um, adhesive to basically renew and make it real sticky again. I've got a little fuzz here from my sweater that's stuck on there. Let's get the it off. Then I'm going to set this, set this aside to dry, sticky side up on a flat surface. Whoops. Sometimes you have to take your time and be patient. Okay, let me set this aside to dry. And let's take a look at the bottom tier of the tiered tray. Here's the transfer that I'm going to use on the bottom tier. Get my fuzzing cloth out again. Now on this layer, I am going to use the nominee for the pine cones. I thought that'd be pretty dramatic. So on this, the second tier, it's going to be the pesto, the green for the leaves, um, the cherry for the berries, and then nominee, the gold, to kind of tie in with what I painted on the edges. I didn't have to paint that, but I kind of like the look. I love the nominee, and it's absolutely so beautiful. This is the backer to my transfer. I'm going to set this aside when my transfers are dry. I'll put them back on this little backer. One side has kind of like a little um, waxy side, and I put the sticky side of the transfer on that so that it doesn't stick to the transfer. And it stays there until I'm ready to use it the next time. Because remember, our transfers can be used 8 to 12 times or more. Now I'm going through and just pressing this down, making sure I don't have any air bubbles in it. I don't want any air bubbles underneath any of my silk screen because then I won't get a real clear definition of the image and I want it to be nice and clear. So let's see, I might as well start with my pesto. I have it open and sitting here. And I think as I'm doing this, I'm going to show you how to use the paste and peel method. Paste and peel is usually used when you're not working on something that's either a large project or multiple colors, something where you're taking a little bit longer than usual to do the project. So I'm going to do my leaves here, my pine leaves and my actual leaf here. And then I'm going to do the paste and peel, meaning I'm going to lift it up, take a look at it, Set it up for a moment, and then I'm going to lay it back down. Forgot where I put my um, cherry. Okay. So I'm not actually pressing it back down, but basically I've lifted it up so the paste is not going to get stuck in the silk screen and dry on me as I work on another area. I'm going to grab my cherry here and catch these two berries in this area. 
and then I'll be done with this side or this corner. Okay. And same thing, lift it up. Oops, and then just let it drop. And I'm going to work from the outside in just because that works for me. Oops, watch where you're putting your squeegee. You notice I almost put it in the cherry red. Okay, so I had an air bubble there. I just squished it out of the transfer. at least part of it. It's paste and peel. I misspoke. Just going to set that back down. I'm going to continue with my pesto while I'm using this squeegee. Why not? And you could move your surface back and forth, whatever works. I like kind of pulling my squeegee towards myself. So I'm rotating my surface as I need to. But if you're more comfortable just turning your hand the opposite way, that's fine too. It's whatever works for you. Isn't that the fun thing about crafting? You could see something that you like and you want to make it, but you say, ah, I'd rather have different colors. And then you just make it in whatever color it appeals to you. And kind of the fun, isn't it? Okay, let me get these little berries here and we'll do a little paste and peel. And then do in wind up end up doing the pine cones last. Okay, let me make sure I got all that. Isn't that beautiful? I'm just laying it lay back down. Now I'm gonna make sure my pine cones are down nice and snugly here. That I didn't accidentally lift them up at all. And then where's my nominee? Ah, my beautiful nominee. Ah, look at that. When you're done, when you've got the image covered, you want to go over it, make sure you've got all the white or all the silk screen covered, smooth it out, remove any lines, remove any excess paste. And if there's any excess paste, you can put it back in the squeegee or use it for the next area that you need to chalk. Boy, did I misspeak. What I meant was take your excess paste and put it back in the jar, not on the squeegee. No sense wasting that paste. Okay, excess paste back into the jar. Now, let's take a look. Oh goodness, isn't that beautiful? Such pretty colors and so festive, isn't it? Tip on what to do if you need your transfer and it's not quite dry just yet. Take your fuzzing towel. One side is the terry that I'm using to fuzz. The other side is like a microfiber. Set your transfer on the microfiber. Sticky side up. Fold it over on itself. Squeeze out all the moisture. Okay. 
and this is pretty much ready to use again. Let's take a look at the smaller tier and make sure it's dry before I go ahead onto the rest, or do I need to, no, I think it's fine. Oh, look at that glazier. Isn't that a pretty blue on that snowflake? So, I'm gonna put this down on my little circle again. And I think that's about right. Looks like it's right across, okay. And I'm gonna go more into the corner on this so it doesn't lift up on me like the way it did on the last one when I did the other side. Make sure I don't have any air bubbles in there. Okay. And I'm gonna do the snowflake again first. So pretty much the same process. There are some other techniques with chalking but at its basic, this is what it is. Apply the chalk paste, squeegee it over the silk screen. Make sure you remove any lines and any excess paste. Put the excess paste back in the jar. And then we could do a little peel and reveal here. Oh, that looks beautiful. Or paste and peel. I don't know why I keep saying peel and reveal. I'm going to make sure this is down nice and snugly, and I'm going to come back in here with my pesto and my detail tool. Oops, I grabbed a little bit too much paste here. Try not to get those berries in my haste. I did get a little bit of one berry. I'm not going to worry about it. We'll just say that that piece of pine is obscuring it. I picked up a little piece of fuzz. Let me clean off my detail tool. So this coming Monday is another sale. We've had such amazing kits that have been for sale every Monday, and sometimes they've sold out within a few days. I think actually the last kit on the acrylic arch, the Peace and Dove kit, I think it sold out the first day. It's just absolutely beautiful. I haven't received mine yet. So I can't show you, but um, I do have a video that someone made doing the nativity with it, and it's just, it's awesome. So um, hopefully I'll get that loaded today, because that set is only available to midnight Sunday. Come Monday morning, we'll have um, some new kits on sale. Okay, I'm going to lift. Paste and peel, let it drop back down. I'm gonna have to, well, I'll wait until I get ready to do the berries when I wanna smooth down those berries to get in there. I could have probably done the berries before I lifted it. Oops, grabbed a little bit too much paste there. This is a little bit more detailed than my norm, but I think the end result is worth it. And all in all, it still is a pretty quick project. Okay. 
We've got one other leaf up there that I didn't do yet. Get that. Get the bottom down here. Oh yeah, that's looking good. I'm going to set it down to do this one. I don't have to worry about the berries. I could use my squeegee and make it really quick. Okay, so now I need to go back over here, clean my squeegee, and get my cherry red to do the berries. And then we'll be done with the top tier of the tiered tray. Easy peasy. Didn't take very long at all, did it? I want to make sure my detail tool is clean before I put it in the cherry paste. Get all that pesto green off of it. Okay. Now I want to gently press this down. Kind of get in there to make sure I don't have any lifting. Oops. Grabbed a lot of paste there. Get right up until the pine. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Oops, I missed a little bit right up there. Okay, that's looking pretty good, isn't it? Let me get the other berries and then we're done with this part. Oops, watch where you're putting that squeegee. I almost went into the wrong jar of paste. I probably should get in the habit of capping up my paste. Our chalk paste is made from chalk. So if you leave it on with if you leave it with the cap off, you have it's a tendency to dry out. It is you know it's really chalk, so it will dry. If your paste dries out, you could always rejuvenate it by pressing um by spritzing it with a little bit of um distilled water and you want to use distilled water because you don't want any issues with the chemicals in your water um, interfering with the, pa the pigments of the paste. Now I do have a little oops here on the first one and I could clean my transfer and counter lay that back down and fix that or I could go in there with like a little paintbrush and paint it. Not quite sure which one I want to do with that but isn't that glacier Paste the prettiest blue, perfect for winter and Christmas scenes. Let me give this a little cleanup real quick. Okay, we're going to speed this up a little bit as I do the other half of the bottom of the tray. Just positioning it. Going to press the transfer down. Remember, it's adhesive backed, so we want it lined up. And then press it down, make sure there aren't any air bubbles. And then basically chalk the individual components of this design in the different colors. Much the same as I did the first half. If you haven't seen what's on special right now, you really do need to check it out. It is an absolutely amazing collection of items, specifically discounted for our Stop, Drop, and Save of November. And Monday, the 27th, comes another surprise debut at 9 o'clock Mountain Time. Check it out. I'm sure you'll find something there that's the perfect gift for yourself or for someone that you love. Okay, let's do a little 
paste and peel here. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. I got a little smudge, so I just used my little Swisper to do that. And I'm going to continue applying my chalk paste. Remember, this is chalk paste, total different animal from chalk paint. Chalk paint would be too runny to use with our transfers and would cause bleeding. Our chalk paste was specifically developed to work with our transfers. And you can see how easy and quick it is to use. Now I'm just pressing down my little pine cones and then I'm going to hit that with some nominee. Our nominee paste is available while supplies last till midnight Sunday. And it's absolutely beautiful. Check this out. Oh my. I think it turned out really nice. What do you think? I love that nominee. It just gives it that little kick, just what it needed. Okay, let me, what do I need to do? Let me cover up some of my paste. And um, I'll show you what else I've got going. This I need. Put the cherry away. And the glacier. Cover that up so they don't dry. Set this aside. I'm gonna do a little repair work here and then show you how we put this together and then we're done. How do you like that? Again, speed dry it. Sticky side up on the microfiber side. Squeeze out all the moisture. Now I want to be careful not to touch the other side that I just did. I mean, I could dry it. Nominee, exclusively available for purchase with a qualifying order of $75 or more. Black Friday weekend, November 24th through 26th, while supplies last. Okay, I used our little drying tool to dry the smaller tier tray before I actually do a little repair work on it here. You always want to make sure that your surface is back to a normal temperature before you apply the transfer again if you've using, used the heat tool or the drying tool. So I'm just lining this up and I'm going to catch the bottom of those little sprigs of pine that I kind of missed. Quick, simple, and easy. Oh, that's pretty much it. Look at that beautiful glazier, that light, light blue. So pretty. And I have a little smudge of pesto on the rim that I painted, so I just wiped that off of the bottom tray. Now, let's put this thing together. What a great vehicle for gift giving. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, let me show you how you put these two pieces together. It really, really is very, very simple. Oops, and I should probably, I need to clean up, don't I? <laughs> Not the best at that. Okay, um, here we go. It comes with everything you need. Sometimes I'm like a kid 
in a candy store, I swear, or at Christmas morning. Okay, you want the one piece without the handle, goes on the bottom. So you wanna take the screw off. I don't know if we wanna put that little washer on the top. Install the plastic washer to the screw on the bottom of the tray before assembling. Okay, wasn't quite sure what that plastic washer. So I'm gonna put it, I've got the plastic washer, the bottom of my tray, pushing upwards. Oops, I need to hold my finger there to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna screw the other piece on it. And I started off crooked. There we go. Like nothing like doing it backwards. I need another hand here. <laughs> Car door. Um, did a number on my hand a number of years ago. It's got a little plate in there and some screws and whatever else. And sometimes it's just difficult with the finer things. Okay. And then you put the top tray on through the little hole. And then just screw the top on. So basically, when the holiday's over, this is easy to take apart. I got a little flake of paint or something there, chip of paint. Take apart and store, or we have little inserts here that you can chalk. Um, something suitable for spring, something suitable for, actually we have a nice one suitable for Halloween, Christmas, whatever, and they could actually go on top of your tray. If you wanna swap them out for the season, I've got something underneath my tray here. But isn't that cute? So what I'm going to do is I am going to load this little baby up. I need to tighten the bottom a little bit more. I've gotta lean in a little bit like the Tower of Pisa because I didn't finish tight, um, tightening it. But I'm gonna load this up with different kinds of candies. I might put a couple mugs and hot chocolate and maybe some bags of marshmallows or something on the bottom. And then some smaller little candies on top. And then I'm gonna wrap the whole thing in cellophane and voila, I've got a nice little gift for someone with a nice little tiered tray that they can use over and over and over again. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I surely appreciate it. See you soon.